Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy, and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp, which makes professional counseling affordable, accessible, and convenient. BetterHelp helps put you in touch with over 3,000 licensed therapists and counselors, which you can meet with at your own pace, at your own schedule, in the comfort and privacy online in your own home, which is particularly good during these times of quarantine and lockdown. So we are currently living in unprecedented times. So beyond the normal stressors of our lives, we have a bunch of other things that are compounded, things that are really out of our control. And that leads to a lot of stress and anxiety. So something like BetterHelp is such a great tool to help us deal with the things that we are feeling. So BetterHelp is really flexible. You can schedule a session anytime you like, anywhere you like. And if for any reason your therapist is not a good fit, you can switch at any time. And you can speak with your therapist via four main modes of communication, via text, messaging, video conferencing, or by phone. So join the over 800,000 people taking charge of their mental health and start living a happier life with 10% off your first month of BetterHelp by heading over to BetterHelp, that's H-E-L-P dot com slash Emmy. Big thanks to BetterHelp for their continued support and for sponsoring this video. Now today, I am going to be taste testing and demoing a product that sounds absolutely fascinating, and it is this. These are magic instant onigiri balls. So if you're not familiar with an onigiri, an onigiri is essentially a seasoned rice ball. It's the perfect ubiquitous Japanese snack that I absolutely love. If you ever get a chance to go to Japan, I recommend going straight to the konbini and grab yourself an inexpensive onigiri for 100 yen, a dollar. They're wonderful. I love them so, so much. They're convenient, they're tasty, and you just hold them right in the palm of your hand. And these are emergency versions of onigiri. So big thanks to Zizi and Deborah Deborah R for suggesting in the comments that I try these because at the time I had not heard of them and they sound absolutely fascinating. So what's super interesting to me about these is that you can make them two different ways. You can add either cold or hot water and then you just let them soak up the water and then you have instant onigiri. But what I found so, so cool about this is that once you add the water, the packaging will shape the onigiri into its classic triangular shape by itself. By itself! So stinking clever, ingenious. Now, if you want to make onigiri in the classic way, I have a very, very old video I made back when I was living in Japan. I will put a link to that video down below. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen the Insta story I did on how to make quick and easy onigiri. I put that in my highlights if you missed it. So. I'll also put that link down below. This doesn't require any kind of shaping with your hands whatsoever. So the reason why there's a niche for these kinds of products is because Japan is an earthquake prone area. And so the idea is that you could have these stocked up in your pantry in the event of an earthquake. So these have a five year shelf life. And I love the fact that you can use cold or hot water. In the event you don't have hot water, you can still have onigiri. So let's go ahead and make this. The cold water takes longer to reconstitute the rice, so I went ahead and made one with cold water, but I'm going to compare that with hot water. So I have three flavors. I wasn't able to get the wakame or the seaweed flavor. They were out, but I got the other three, including the salmon, the gomugu, which is vegetables and mushrooms, and the kombu, which is a seasoned seaweed. I love this packaging, and I love the instructions on Japanese packaging. It's so illustrative. You can see exactly, based on the pictures, what you need to do if you can't read Japanese, like me. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove this sticker. This is so cool, watch. So you peel the sticker. <laughs> I love that! And it reveals a little window and this is the fill line so we're going to add water to this red line oh i love it it's so clever i love it love it love it i can already smell the seasonings it smells kind of sweet the rice looks very interesting almost looks kind of like shattered and kind of crumbly and put those back in there so my water has just come up to the boil now i'm going to add water just to that red fill line Packages that's precisely 67 milliliters. There. That's so satisfying. I love it. 
make sure you remove the air absorber <laughs> and then add the hot water. Then you take all the air out. Now we're going to shake this. We wanna make sure that all of the rice gets rehydrated. So make sure this is sealed really tightly because we have hot water in here. And we're gonna shake this from side to side and make sure that everything is well hydrated. And now we're gonna set this aside to sit for 15 minutes. Alrighty, bye Onigiri. Let's make the other one. So the last time I was in Japan was last November. And the first thing I did upon arriving was head straight to a convenience store. <laughs> and I bought a fizzy water and an onigiri. Yes. So I will be back in 15 minutes once these have completely rehydrated. All right, lovelies, I am back with my onigiri. They have been sitting for the requisite 15 minutes and one hour. Let's go ahead taste these. So, so very excited. So I'm going to taste these in the order in which I made them. The first one being the salmon flavor. Mm -hmm. Now the fun does not end with this onigiri. We are going to use our scissors next. We're going to cut this right here. Right. And then we're going to cut along here or along here, as you can see right here and right here. Now watch this. Dun dun. I'm gonna take this and peel it back. Reveal the triangular onigiri. <laughs> Isn't that great? It did it by itself. It's in a triangle by itself. Oh my goodness. I love it. It's so, so clever. So clever. And it's just so convenient and easy to eat. And you don't get your hands messy. <sighs> Love it! Next, I'm gonna do the one I made with hot water, and this is the gomoku. And then peel. Ah, oh, yes! So awesome. That is so satisfying, that peel back. It just is, oh my gosh, that looks delicious. <sighs> this one smells really fragrant. It smells like bamboo shoots, soy sauce, sugar. It smells delicious, okay. Here. And then the peel back. Dun, 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 dun. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and give our onigiri a taste. Now, the thing I'm most curious about besides the actual taste of these is the difference in texture between doing the cold water process versus the hot water process. So let's taste the cold water one first, and this is the salmon one. Itadakimasu. Mmm. I have to say that that hydrated pretty well. I was expecting the rice to be hard inside and it's not, and it's still chewy. The onigiri is cool or at room temperature, which you normally have onigiri at that temperature anyways. That's not bad. In fact, it's pretty good. It's kind of uncanny how they're able to get the rice to rehydrate like that, very evenly. It tastes just like cold or room temperature rice. Slightly sticky, and it holds everything together. The salmon flavor is pretty subtle. It's in there. There's some salt in there, but it's pretty light. I think the thing that I'm missing most is the crunchy nori or seaweed paper on the outside. I love that contrast of textures of the kind of sticky rice with the crunch of the nori on the outside. But yeah, for something that I made by just adding water and let sit for an hour, 
pretty good. Sometimes I like to dip my onigiri in a little bit of shoyu or some soy sauce. This is a little kitty dish that I picked up the last time I was in Japan. Let me show you it, it's so stinking cute. So you can just add a little bit of soy sauce in there and it reveals a kitty, isn't that great? <laughs> And a little bit of wasabi. I love this instant stuff. This stuff is made by SMB. This is what we have in our refrigerator. I think this could use a little seasoning, so I'm gonna dip it in there. Mm -hmm. It should be noted that this is not traditional onigiri. You just eat as it is. This is more of a sushi accompaniment, but since I don't have nori, I thought, why not? Alrighty, let's try the ones that we made with hot water. Now, this is the one that I'm most excited about, the gomuku, because look at all of those fixings. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This one's delicious. It's super flavorful. Not only the rice, but the fixings that they include in there. What I initially thought was a dried mushroom is actually, I think, a preserved turnip. It has a really great crunch to it and a really nice flavor. It's got soy sauce in there, a little bit of mirin, a little bit of dashi. Delicious. Mm -hmm. So of the two preparations, I definitely prefer the hot water. Number one, it's a lot faster. Number two, while this is not hot, it is a little bit warmer than the cold version, a little bit warmer than room temperature. So it's just very pleasant. It just seems more aromatic as well. Although the two rices plumped up equally well, they both have a similar texture, the slightly warm version is slightly nicer. Okay, our final onigiri. Here we go. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That one tastes like it was just plucked out of the ocean. That one is really flavorful as well. Nice sea briny flavor. The salmon one seems slightly under seasoned and I'm not sure if that was just because I prepared it with cold water or if it just simply has a little less salt in it. But this one, like the gomuku, is really flavorful. The rice has tons of flavor, and the texture, again, I like better than the cold version. Delicious. Mm. Alrighty, so there you have it. Onigiri appropriate for the apocalypse. Thank you guys so much for watching, and big thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Start living a happier life with 10% off your first month by heading over to BetterHelp, that's H-E-L-P dot com slash Emmy, and join the over 800,000 people taking control of their own mental health. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Ooh, that was weird. It came from like down here.